My next guest has prayed for eight dead people who have come back to life. His associates have prayed for over a hundred dead people who have come back to life. Is it possible that you and I can tap into such miraculous power? Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. And I have to tell you, I have been so looking forward to this interview. My guest is Surpriza Zatoli. And Surpriza, how did you get the name Surpriza? I got the name because of this spot here on my side. Uh -huh. I see it. Yes, when, when I was born, they were not expecting to have a... Uh, somebody with the gray hair coming out. So when they that, saw that's it, unusual in Africa. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So when I was coming, they say, "Oh, this is a surprise." I see. Now, when you were six months old, uh, a dog ripped your eye out. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's tell why me about you that. You see the, this skull here. Yeah, you can see the skull. So uh, when I was six months old, the dog was eating the food, and then I was just approaching, crawling there to the dog food, and then the dog ripped, bite, beaten me here, and the eye went to fall off. That is what they completely said. Completely out of your body. Completely out of, off. Mm. So my mother, with a piece of cloth, they ran and get the eye and put it back, the time here, and then stay that for two weeks. And then after the two weeks, they opened, my eyes was fine. Now, you were born in Mozambique? I was born in Mozambique, And yes. you have to understand, Surpriser came from more generations of witch doctors than he can remember. But uh, when you were a young man, uh, you heard a voice. Tell me about that. Yes, when I was a young man, I heard a voice. We were sleeping in the small, muddy hut, and the voice was so loud. Surprise, surprise, wake up. Move out from the, your village. Surprise, surprise, wake up, move from your village. Well, when I woke up, my father and my mother, they were sleeping. I woke up, so who is this is one that is speaking? Move from your village. If you don't move, you die. Move from your village. If you don't move, you die. I woke up. I went to the house of my friend Gafar that night. And then Gafar, I told Gafar what had happened to me. I said, I'm going away of the village. Gafar said to me, I will go with you wherever you go. Okay, so we took off. It was very small trail in the jungle, forest is where we were living, a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of malaria bugs and all kind of that stuff. So we started walking on the small trail. We got lost. We stayed in the jungle for two weeks. Later on, we appeared at the border of Malawi, the village called Villanova. So when we appeared there, there was a man that he had a dream. His name, this man, is Lucas. This man had a dream, go to the, this one of the trees, acacia tree, go to that acacia tree, you will see two boys coming from the jungle. Get them into your house. And then this man, the following, the following day after his dream, he went to that tree. And while he was on that tree, we were coming, me and my friend Kafar. And then he said to, to us, I was just here to wait for you, let's go to my house. I mean, th this is pretty supernatural. He hears a voice. He leaves his home. Uh, a man meets him. Who uh, Did this man know Jesus? Yes, he was a Christian. And he led you to know Jesus then? The following day. Okay, yes. but, and what, you've, what he found out is if he had not been obedient and left his house, what happened to everyone in your house? This is what happened. The following day, we gave our life to Jesus before that man, Mr. Lucas, and then two, because we were two weeks in the jungle. 
now later on the fisherman was just going to Malawi to sell the fish and then they say in the village such and such family they all died how they died the village people they took the bile of crocodile the bile of crocodile is very poisonous they put it in, into the maize meal they mix with the bile of crocodile they take the food to give my family so your family was all poisoned yes they and all if poisoned. you had lived there you would have been poisoned. I like to eat so <laughs> <laughs> okay so so get this a voice tells them to leave. What did you, coming from all those generations of witch doctors, yes. had anyone told you about Jesus before this? That before then, I, we didn't know even about, uh, about Jesus. Are, no, are you what the, we knew are you the on, first one in your, your... I'm first generation, yes, believer. Okay. Did, you told me that you had like a, a dream or almost a vision just before you received Jesus. Tell me about that. The dream is that there was a vision. When Mr. Lucas was telling us about the creation, he was explaining the creation, said the creation is so, so, so. And then he started talking a little bit about the plan of God. So suddenly I saw my eyes was just like changing, not being there anymore. So I was seeing, I was in the hedge, and then this was the hell burning, and then I'm ready to go into, the, into it. Me, so and then I started crying and shaking. And Mr. Lucas said, no, as long as you breathe, you have a chance. How did you even know about hell? Oh, well, he was talking. was talking and the plan of God. See, what did you see with your eyes? What I really saw in my eyes, I was standing like this place. It was on the hedge. And then this is very deep, steep something. And the smoke is coming out. And the flames of fire is coming out. And then I was ready my life to go into it. So then it started shaking. Yeah, you would and like crying. be pushed over a ledge. And, yes, yes, yes. And God, did you did you feel like it was real? With the was it like flames of fire? Well, I felt that I was shaking and crying, tear down. Now today, surprise! And remember how he got his name. He was a big surprise. Africans in Malawi, uh, in Mozambique, uh, they don't have gray hair when they're born like that. Uh, and he has prayed for eight people that were dead that have come back to life. His associates have prayed for over a hundred. And I understand they don't even count someone that yes. they were dead and they came back to life unless they were dead for a while. How, yes. What, what, tell me what they look for to, to count someone as they've at, come. At least a day. At a least day, a day they yes, have to be day dead. to day because some people, they just have a heart attack, fainting and uh, all Okay, kind of I want to find out. I want to find out the first time he prayed for a dead person that came back to life. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision. But scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. One new humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how one new humanity is critical to bringing multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Surprise of Satoli. And Surprise, uh, you were the first person in your family, you know, how, who knows how many generations, that came out of being a witch doctor to yes. being a sold out believer in Jesus. And was it your uh, cousin or your brother uh, uh, became a believer in Jesus, uh, the one that uh, died recently? Yes, it's my cousin. All right, your cousin yes. became a believer in Jesus. Why yes. did, what happened to him? What happened to him, he was a wild person in preaching on the trends and the market and so on. But just recently... Wilder than you? <laughs> yeah, he was more... <laughs> <laughs> 
And then so what happened 25th of September, it was the day of the call the holiday for the military. So, and then he was preaching at the market when he was going home. He finded the people, the religious people, they killed him. Now, when you found out about this, the devil got payback. You had yes. a meeting. Did many Muslims come to the Lord at your meeting? Oh, well, after that, it was three weeks later because I was in Israel that time. So I went back to that area where he was killed and then we started gathering the people. 4,000 people, they came to that meeting. And half of them, 2,000, they gave their life to Jesus. Were many of them Muslims? Yes. Are many Muslims coming to know Jesus in Africa? Oh, this is a good news for them, though, so much, because they are coming rushing like they are running from something, from danger and so on. I'm they wondering if Lord. many of the Muslims were like you, in other words, having visions or, or, or dreams from heaven or, 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 and being told to believe in Jesus. Is that happening to many? Lots of Muslims. Some of them, and like just another man, he was just going to kill himself. He was a Muslim. Mm -hmm. He was going to kill himself. When he was going to kill himself, he met this man, bright man, shining before him. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to kill myself. He said, no, don't go to kill yourself. Go back and look for a pastor, and he will tell you something. He came back and found the, the house of Christian. The man was not there. He found just only the children. And then the man came back, spoke to him. He gave his life to Jesus. Now he's a pastor. And that's happening to many Muslims. Yes. I want to find out the first time that Surpriza prayed for a dead person that came back to life. Do you remember that first time? I remember that very Tell much. Me. Well, I was in this village. The village is called Komati Tri. So I was doing this, a small revival meeting as in the community hall. So the next day, the chief of the area of Komati Tri came to me and said, shut down the revival meeting because someone died at the, near the community hall. I said, Chief, can I go there to see the person? And he said, yes, of course, let's go. He took me to the house. I found six ladies that were sitting in the house. And then the chief introduced me to those ladies. He, went, he walked home, went home to his house. Well, and then what had happened, I asked the lady if I can pray. He said, of course, go ahead and pray. I started praying. While I was praying, I opened my eyes. The ladies, they were sleeping. The girl was the girl of six years old. Her name is Nshansha, the name of the girl. And Nshansha was wrapped with a sheet. Hmm. So I look around, the ladies were sleeping. I said, oh, this is my chance. I walk to the, to the girl that was laying down and wrapped. And I myself, I start unwrapping the girl. Unwrapping the girl. Suddenly, the hand came out, stiff and cold. Well, I took my finger. I look still around, the ladies, they were sleeping and snoring. I took my finger into the step behind the hand of the girl. I was praying. Suddenly, the girl grabbed up my finger. I was really <laughs> shocked. I jumped. I stood far away. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so she looks at me and says, I'm hungry. Well, I look around, the ladies, they were drinking Coca-Cola. I took the Coca-Cola, put into the glass I gave to the girl. I woke up, the first person I woke up, the mother woke up. When the mother woke up, ooh, she was shocked. All the six ladies ran out and started <laughs> shouting out. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the chief heard the noise. Chief came running and when he came inside the house, he saw the girl was just having, drinking a nice Coca-Cola. I'm not advertising Coca-Cola. No. <laughs> I, I understand. You're yes. at, he's advertising the king of kings. That's yes, yes, he's yes. advertising. <laughs> yes. They must have been shocked. Uh, tell me about the time you had a dream about a dead person that came back to life. Well, another one is that this is the elder man. His name is Inyoni. At night, I just had a dream. I see the bunch of people going to, the, to bury someone, but I had the impression something talking, that person is not dead, was on my dream. I ran to, the, to, to them, I said, please, I want to see this person that you are going to bury. And then they say, oh, no, we say, please, 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 open for me. They open. When I saw the person, it was just like the person had so much laughter in his mouth. So this person has so much laughter, he's not dead. And then after that, I prayed in the, in the name, and then so the person rose from the dead. That was on the dream. The following day, 
by the whole day, the mind went out. I didn't think. And then someone came to me and said, they are going to bury someone today. I said, uh, where is that? They said, here just by the mountain at a new farm. I said, oh, let's go. And then we went there. We went straight into the house. We find the people they're making, they took the door of this man and his table, they're making coffin out of it. A coffin? Yes, a coffin from his door and his right. table. So the, those pieces, they are finishing, the, making the coffin. So this man was dead for three days. Now we went inside the house. We asked the people if we can see the person. They said, of course, they gathered the family together. They went there and pulled down the... The, the sheet that was closing there, and they opened the face. As soon as they opened the face, I realized that the face that I saw last night in my dream, I started being filled with the joy and started laughing and praying. You knew. You I knew, knew that. I knew that exactly is going to come up back to life. And did he? So in the prayer, he shouted, Hey! At the end of the story. Well, the, the, when he shouted the, like that, it meant that even the toilet came out because the noise was being said. The room was filled with intense, massive, of stinky, smelling, very bad smell. But he was not even ashamed. He was happy and then so on. So this man in his testimony said, during that when he was sleeping, he was fighting with the dark forces. Mm -hmm. So the dark forces was pulling him into the place that was so much hotter and hotter and hotter. Until when the bright shining light came, started shining there, is when the dark force left at him. And he, when he came up again, rose from the dead. You know what? There is such a presence of God in this studio. Surprise, do you feel what I feel? I, I feel, I feel right I, now. And, and I'm going to tell you something else. Surprise told me he is happy no matter what happens 24-7. How would you like to be happy? I mean, genuinely, not drumming it up, but genuinely happy, enjoy 24-7. I would. I know you would. When we come back, I literally believe we're going to have resurrection power from the dead. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I'm 14 years old. This morning, I watched It's Supernatural about angels and warmth poured on me. It made me cry. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at SidRoth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Surprisa Satoli. And Surprisa, just before the break, did you, you felt what I felt. Yes. It, it was, was it angel came in? What happened? Why did you just the presence of God get so strong? Yes, because God is about to free some people and some things. Would you pray for them now? Yes, yes, yes. Do yes. that. And I see there is a man with his wife and he has been having a tremendous time um, not good time, not uh, excitement time, but God wants just right now as they are sitting on the cushions, they are right now watching this program and they really need the freedom. And God, I, I feel like there is a draining rainbow upon them right now and it's just giving that rainbow. Is There is a rainbow, the cushion, and I feel that the cushion is brownish and so something like that. And God will just want to touch them right now and release the freedom. Pray for them right now. Right now, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the major freedom to my dear or oh, to that and his wife right now. Blessing and freedom in Jesus' name. You know, I believe God wants to do some more. Yes. But I, I'm just hearing, I know this is little, but I'm just <laughs> hearing someone has a headache. Yeah. And the headache is gone. And it's not little to you. It's good to be free. Tell me about the person with no eyeballs that got their eyes. This is the lady that we prayed for at a conference. And we prayed for this lady. And then this lady didn't have, she had a disease 
the disease normally is in Malawi, that disease that when that disease starts, the eyeballs start to get shrinking, 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 the liquid water comes and then at the end the eyeball goes away. So we prayed for she didn't have the eyeball on both eyes. After we pray, she didn't get. But what had happened is that when she went to sleep that night, during the night in her dream, she dreamed that she see, and then she went outside and started singing. Now other ladies, they woke up. And when they went and said, oh, who brought you outside? They say, no, I'm dreaming that I can see. They say, no, you are not dreaming. What do you say? I'm just having this a nice dream. The following day, she had a brand new eyeballs. Uh, someone's uh, leg is being healed right now. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's from the knee down to the foot. In that area, you're being healed right now. And someone's back is being healed right now. And someone's hip is being healed right now. Tell me about it. You know, he's in Africa and he has seen every miracle in the Bible. How about feeding? where food is multiplied. Oh, that is what we had is so much of that. And so much <laughs> of that. Did you get that? So much? <laughs> so, I love his childlike faith. <laughs> we had chicken multiplied, bread multiplied. How many people were fed from how much food? Tell me. We had a bag that which was in 2000, the year 2000. We that time was having a flood in southern Mozambique. So we, we got on one bag. We didn't count how many bread, but it was on one bag to go. We took it to the concentration camp where the people, um, well, we don't, it's not a refugee camp. It's just where they are running from the flood. And it was thousands okay. upon thousands upon thousands. We started giving the people that bread. How much bread did you have? It's one bag. One bag. How big a bag? One like, bag, maybe the bag like this. Okay. But it was thousands upon thousands of people. You saw thousands and thousands of people getting bread from yes, one bag. from one bag and never finish. Was there food left over? Well, yes, yes. We still had the bag. Yeah. We still had what the did bag. The people, did the people realize what was going on? Well, the people, maybe they thought that they, we hide it somewhere, <laughs> so we're just going and get and, more. And you see this type of thing often exactly. in Africa. Exactly, so many well, times. If you were to pray for the people that are watching right now, or by way of video, could we live in joy 24-7? So much. We, would you pray right now? Yes, I can do that right now. Right now. Yes. Thank you, Father. Right now we come to you and pray for dear watch the listeners and those that in the whole audience in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the joy that will come 24-7 to each and every one, the everlasting joy, the contagious joy, the epidemic of joy in the name of Jesus. I declare this joy to all the, the, the audiences, wherever, by thousands, wherever they are. Joy and freedom and everlasting joy in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In someone's chest, there is a tightening going on in your chest. You're not having a heart attack. That's a lying symptom. You are free in Jesus' name. And someone also is the itching of left and eye. So right now, even that has been caused by sinus, but right now I rebuke it, and you be healed right now, in Jesus' name. There's such a peace. So Is there anything else that God wants to do right now? Yeah, I, f I feel like God wants to lift the people into their dreams, because I feel like there is a lot of people out there that they've forgot their dreams. So to renew their dream. To renew and their for dreams. And to have it to happen. Yes. To come to pass. Pray yes. real quick. Yes, right now. Thank you so much. I pray that you will bring back what which is lost. In Jesus' name, let the dream come back. And you know what? Uh, we, we did a special tape where you began worshiping. I want our people now to experience the African Christian form of worshiping God. Would you worship God right now? Lift your holy hands up. <laughs> Lift your holy hands up and join us.
Begin to worship Ooh, God. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, yes, you are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful, King of Glory. As we worship you right now. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, right now. I feel like it's almost like a spagnard oil being poured out. Oh, a spagnard oil, a spagnard oil. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. Yes, the king is at a table right now. Oh, Jesus, you are faithful. Oh, Lord, you are faithful, oh, Lord, every day, every hour, you are faithful, oh, Lord. I pray this faithfulness, let the listeners, the, oh, Jesus, thank you, you are so faithful, the loving and most holy, thank you. Jesus' name. 